How's it going, everybody? You know, I, I was supposed to move yesterday, and the movers I booked canceled on me. But they're they're booked today, so I'm just been I'm stuck in this empty, well, partially packed apartment, and there's no TV or computer. But but anyway, I digress. I'm angry, everyone. I'm angry at another perceived media double standard. Let's talk about the alt left. There are some statistics that have come out that are really interesting that show that the alt left really is the alternative left. Before I get into that. Let's go back in time to when Donald Trump at this press conference said, what about the alt-left that attacked the alt-right? Immediately, we see news organizations start claiming, well, there is no alt-left. It's a made-up term. It was made up by centrist left liberals and Democrats and conservatives to equate the far left to neo-Nazis. It's a false equivalence. They're saying it's not true. And, it's, and, it's not, and they're saying it's not true because apparently the alt-left doesn't define any particular group, right? Does that sound strangely familiar? I mean, everyone is being called alt-right by, by many journalists. Dave Rubin being called alt-right, me being called alt-right, Sargon, shoe on head, people who are clearly progressive or liberal but just don't subscribe to shutting down speech or violently attacking people have been called alt-right. So there is no unifying group. The argument they actually have is that because the alt-right defines themselves as the alt-right, that's a real group. And because the alt-left was made up by other people, clearly the alt-left isn't real. So there you have it. Another great media double standard that the alt-left can't possibly be real because it doesn't define any single particular group, but the alt-right certainly is real and everyone is alt-right. What? No, that doesn't make sense. Look, let's go back in time. These people claiming that alt-left isn't a real thing, it doesn't exist. I've been using the phrase for over five months when I made a video about this. The reason I say alt-left is that I want to differentiate the average liberal person from the far left groups of violent people. And it doesn't mean I wanna equate Antifa to neo-Nazis. People are often saying, oh, that's a false equivalence. Antifa and neo-Nazis are very different. You're absolutely right, they're very different. I think Nazis are the worst of the worst, but I also still think Antifa is bad and the alt-left is bad. And you can still think a group is bad without equating it to another group that may or may not be worse. That's not the point. The point is the average person on the left or the right does not agree with the principles of the far left and the far right. But okay, we've got some statistics to back this up. Because a poll from Rasmussen just came out showing that 85% of people believe protecting free speech is more important than worrying about whether or not someone is offended. In fact, only 8% of those surveyed felt that protecting someone's feelings was more important than free speech, meaning, the majority of people believe in free speech, believe in the right to assemble, peaceful assembly, the constitution, etc. And it wasn't just this poll, because remember in the past few days, I talked about another poll. This one from PBS and NPR showing that 62% of people believe the Confederate statues should remain. And another large portion of those surveyed didn't even have an opinion. But now we're seeing not just Confederate statues attack, we're seeing other statues attacked. And what does this mean? The alternative left is a real thing. As much as Wikipedia and these media organizations don't want to admit it, there is an alternative left that doesn't believe in free speech, that believes in vandalism and violence, and that they have a right to forcefully instill their political ideology on other people. That is not what the average person in this country believes. Now, I've talked about this a lot, and it bears repeating that if push comes to shove, if violence escalates, I guarantee you the average person on the left will bow out, will not engage in violence, does not support it. We saw a video from the Boston rally where a guy is having a conversation, it gets a little heated. Someone comes up and punches this guy in the face and he wasn't even doing anything. After this, another video comes out showing what happened afterwards. And there's a woman screaming, you can't just hit people, this guy was on our side. What happens when you tell people punching Nazis is okay? Well. People aren't really good at identifying what a Nazi is because apparently if everyone is a Nazi or everyone is alt-right, they're gonna start punching random people and in this instance, they punched one of their own. So it's particularly frustrating when I look at the Wikipedia page for the phrase alt-left and it says it was made up by far-right groups. No, that's not true. Politico gets it right. It was made up by centrist Democrats, liberals. Yes, I use the term alt-left because I wanna make sure everybody knows when I say I'm left-leaning, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna go out and punch someone in the face or take away their rights because I think mine are more important. We need to be able to say, hey, that's a different group of people and doesn't represent us. So it's, it's just fascinating to me when I hear that the media, the journalists think they really are the good guys and the epitome of, of truth and justice, that they're the bastions of, of fact. 
and they can actually put out articles claiming, well, you can't call someone alt-left because there's too many different groups associated with it. And these are the same people that will just blanket statement alt-right. It's as though these people didn't even Google search the term alt-left because it's been around for a long time. And simply because the alt-right calls themselves alt-right doesn't mean that the alt-left can't exist. Now, I will say there are many personalities on the right that are using the term alt-left willy-nilly. And I think it's almost reactionary. You see what happens with the term alt-right and how it, you, it's used to demonize everybody. Alt-right actually is associated with white nationalism. So it's very serious when someone insinuates or flat out calls someone alt-right. That's a, that's a serious charge. You're basically saying these people are pro-white ethnostate. So it's very strange when mixed race people and minorities are called alt-right. But we can't have the double standard. If anyone can be alt-right for simply disagreeing with, with those who would silence free speech or be violent, then the alt-left is that violent faction. If I come out and say, look, I don't agree with you going around beating people. I don't agree with you shutting down speech. They want to accuse me of being alt-right. Then I'll say, okay, so if you do agree with violence, and you do agree with shutting down free speech and taking away people's rights, then you are alt-left. You are the inverse to that same argument. We just saw in Charlottesville, they had a city council meeting and a bunch of protesters stormed in and started complaining, started protesting about what happened in Charlottesville, the Unite the Right rally, blaming the mayor, you know, saying things that were kind of like, you've got blood on your hands or whatever, forcing the mayor to flee under police protection. The people that would do this are not the average person. And this is, this is where it gets kind of scary. Because the average person, liberal or conservative, prefers predictable to chaotic. And that means if this violence escalates, if unreasonable people try to take away rights, the average person will be okay with security measures and a crackdown and an increase in executive authority. If violence erupts in the streets and things start getting really bad, I would not be surprised to see the government issue some kind of order, police protection, National Guard. We've seen the National Guard come out. We see SWAT police fully armed out in front of Grand Central Station out of a fear of terrorism. And we've all heard the argument for years that those that would give up their freedom for security deserve neither and will lose both. To uh, People say it's a Ben Franklin quote, I'm not sure if it is. But the idea is there. If these people on the far left think that people shouldn't have free speech, well, they're doing a damn good job of getting free speech taken away. Because we're going to come to a point where to, to stem the violence, someone's going to have to step in and stop it from happening. And what's scary about all of that is that the average person would agree with that. The average person would prefer to have armed, armed police, National Guard on their street corner than worry about having to go outside and see a building burn down or someone throw a brick at their head or accuse them of being a Nazi and stab them. It's kind of like in The Dark Knight. Have you seen The, the Dark Knight, the Batman movie? When the Joker tells Harvey Dent that he noticed, so long as things go according to plan, nobody cares. But deviate from that plan and everyone loses their minds. If people feel they're safe, they can go outside and not be worried about being attacked. They can go to work, get food, and feed their family. They would prefer that, even if it was an oppressive regime, over fires in the streets, people beating each other. In fact, some people have posited that the Arab Spring, the reason it sparked off was that food was becoming more and more expensive. If a person feels oppressed, but they're fat and happy, then they're going to say, all right, well, you know, I'm going to bow out. But if basic resources become constrained and a person is being oppressed, that's when all hell will break loose. The gist of what I'm trying to say, there is a fringe group of people. The polls show it. These are not the mainstream and the media needs to stop acting like they are. But these people are going to get violent and it's going to be bad for the rest of us. All I try to do is make sure that I remind people the average person is just walking their dog, watching Game of Thrones, eating some pizza, not really paying attention to what's going on and that's important. And hopefully this political violence de-escalates. And I'll say it a million times, I don't think it will. But let me know what you think, comment below the alt left. Is it a legitimate term? Is the media right to say it's not a real thing? Or should we just call the violent faction that's aligned with the left, the alt left? We'll keep the conversation going. Click the like button if you like the video. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TimCast. If you wanna support the work that I do, you can go to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like or give nothing at all. My videos will always be free and available. I'm moving in a few hours, so admittedly, I feel like I've could have done a lot better in a lot of videos I'm doing lately, but man, come on, like packing, this has been a nightmare, moving people, canceling on me, sitting around, stressed out, it is what it is. But hopefully once I move in, the podcast kicks up, 
we'll start. Uh, I'll start getting back on the ground and doing, doing some more big coverage. There's a hurricane about to hit in Texas that I'm looking at, and, and I might not be able to make it to it, but these are the kind of stories I want to hit. So stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m., and I will see you tomorrow.